This is Jerry Beck, and I'm at the Asifa Hollywood Animation Archive, where I am watching this wonderful, beautiful Technicolor Hook cartoon produced by Walt Lance. I believe this cartoon is 1943, produced for the Navy, the Bureau of Aeronautics, as it said. Maybe that's one reason why there's a little you know, helicopter on the uh, launch pad in this futuristic 1953 household that we're looking at here. This is a really handsome, beautiful cartoon. As good as, or maybe in some cases better than some of the cartoons Lance was producing in uh, 43. Apparently, this is Grim Natwick animation. And Grim animated on a lot of this film. The character Hook, Seaman Hook, was created by Hank Ketchum, who would later go on to great fame as the creator of Dennis the Menace. And this was his idea. He was in the Navy during the war. He was doing sales and training material for the war bond program and uh, had worked at Disney. So he had this idea to do an animated film with a new character that would help uh, sell war bonds. And he got an approval and was sent out to uh, Hollywood where Lance already had a deal with the Navy. So this fit into their deal. Ketchum says he uh, supervised this project. The voice of Hook in this film seems to be George O'Hanlon. At least that's who he sounds like. And George O'Hanlon, of course, was later the uh, voice of George Jetson in the 1960s. And before that was the star of a series of uh, Joe McDoke's comedies at Warner Brothers. And this is about the time those comedies started, during the war. And it would make a lot of sense. It, it does sound like O'Hanlon. So we're going to go with that. The soundtrack is fantastic because it's uh, Daryl Calker who uh, was doing all of the uh, Walter Lance uh, swing symphonies and, uh, and scores at that time, and it really has a great jazzy soundtrack on it. This film, of course, has a lot of the uh, Japanese stereotypes. The, interestingly enough, the plot of this film is very similar to uh, a uh, Popeye cartoon called Scrap the Japs has a lot of the same gags in it, actually. And it's interesting that this is a film to sell war bombs, but it, it's, it's quite long, it's in Technicolor, and uh, most of its running time is a bunch of these gags of, uh, of Hook versus this uh, Japanese air pilot. It's almost like they <laughs> they went off message just to make a funny cartoon. But the Navy certainly got their money's worth out of it. According to Ketchum, this film uh, took six weeks to produce. And occasionally you see a shortcut like that shot of the uh, Japanese pilot in the sky and these still frames of some of the backgrounds when there's really not much movement. And that's how they, they cut corners in this film. Another way that you can notice that they cut corners is that the uh, animation was done rough and it went straight to inking without uh, a lot of cleanup or assisting. So sometimes on some of the scenes you'll see when they make a fist, their hands turn into some weird shape or a ball rather than uh, actually having fingers and everything on it. That's because the lead animator was, was working very fast. Lance sort of was the real pickup studio. 
I'd personally think of his studio as what I call a B studio compared to some of the, the A studios. The A studios would be the ones with bigger budgets like Warner's, MGM, Disney, and even Paramount. Whereas Terry Toons, Columbia, and uh, Lance were sort of the B, the B units. But Lance really had the slickest of those, of those B people. And uh, he really let his uh, artists kind of do their thing because, and you can tell that by who's directing the films. You know, when Kilhane came in, his films are just great. And you just know he's doing his own thing in those films. Lance is a, a bit of an acquired taste, certainly after 1950, but in the 30s and 40s, they're a lot of fun. During the 40s, people described uh, the Lance Studio as being a, a real family sort of a, an organization. It wasn't as much of a, a business as the other studios felt like. And of course, in the 50s, it almost was a family affair with uh, his wife doing the voice of Woody Woodpecker. As you know from this DVD, uh, Ketchum put together three other Hook films, and uh, Warner Brothers ended up doing them. Although, those films really feel like Warner Brothers. I mean, obviously the Clampett one, uh, the Jones one, and, uh, and a McKimson one. Uh, the McKimson one, I believe, being the first thing McKimson ever did. Uh, it's his earliest director credit. I wish I knew who the guy was who did the lettering in these Lance cartoons. There's a lot of it in this film, but I, I really like that. That's that font. So buy bonds. Let your dollars fight for you. <laughs> <laughs>